Good morning, in this week's Block News, a look at five exciting things coming soon to Gutenberg, a quick sneak peek of collaborative editing, a brand new Linktree style theme is released, and Alan Rickman reads the latest Gutenberg review. Let's get newsy. Time for Block News. It's news about blocks. The Gutenberg design team have shared some of the exciting projects they're working on. I will put a link to this page in the description below, but I'm going to talk you through each one very quickly. The first one is this custom CSS panel. So at the moment, if you want to add custom CSS within the block itself, you can via a plugin. This is a proposal to put it into core, and you've just got some screenshots here of how it might look. It's pretty straightforward. You can see here we've got this advanced function down here, which we've already got, and you'll click on that, and then it will open up this panel here. And you're going to be able to apply this uh, through global styles or also in the group block settings, apparently. The next one is sticky groups. This is kind of a bit left field. I've done quite a few tutorials on stickiness, so I'm quite excited by this. Whether this actually makes it into core or not, not 100% sure. But it's going to be the ability to make group blocks sticky. So you'll see an example of one of the tutorials I've recently done where this right-hand column is sticky and the left-hand column scrolls as the user scrolls the website. It'll let you do stuff like that. And this is potentially what it might look like over here in the tools. You'll have this um, content layout option. And then over here, you can see you can either choose default or sticky. And there's another screenshot here, which I'll show you. And this is potentially what it'll look like actually in the list view. So it'll actually give you a, an identifier to say that is sticky and these are scrollable. So I think that's a really cool little option. Um, it feels like a nice to have rather than a must have, but there we go. Let's see whether it makes it into core or not. Number three is move document information and an outline to the list view panel. So at the moment we have this document outline that a lot of people actually never see. And you can actually navigate by it and actually show you your headings and write the headings in for you. Um, but it's actually quite separate at the moment. It's a separate little icon. This is a proposal to put this into the list view, which I think would be fantastic. So essentially you'd click on list view and you just have two tabs. The list view tab as you normally would, but then the outline tab would come into the list view. Kind of makes sense to me to consolidate that. That's a big thumbs up from me. This next one would be super cool. This is push local block styles. This would give you the ability to create a style, let's say in a button, but then push that to the global style. So you could apply that to all the buttons on your website. This is some potential interfaces here. Let me just show you this. Pretty straightforward though. So this is the, the kind of the local aspect of it. And then you just have a big button down here that said push to global styles. And then you also they're suggesting here, which is quite a nice idea. These are all ideas at the moment they're getting feedback on uh, that this is potentially what you might see. You might have a styles summary in this panel down here. This is a nice way of showing this. So before you actually push it, you see the you get a summary of the styles that you're going to push to global. And again, this is another iteration over here. This next one is also very exciting. This is import export copy styles without switching themes. The without switching themes is super cool. I hadn't even thought this, this might be an option, but essentially what this lets you do is create a style within your theme. So create a different design within your theme and then create a custom style out of that and save that to your site. But you can also import that from other sites into your site, so other themes within your sites. And you can also export that as well to use on other sites as well. So this is really profound because style theme styles essentially are like mini themes. And I'm going to be covering this in a tutorial in the next couple of weeks of how profoundly important this is. This is one potential interface of how it might look though. You'll see here you can browse styles at the moment, uh, but here you can actually add a custom style. This is where you would name it. So you would have created the style on your, your site at this point, I think. And then here, you'll see this is what it will look like. This is your custom style appearing here. And here you can also download. And there's another screen here I want to show you. This is also this, uh, here we go. This is how you can actually upload styles as well. So this comes back to the big question of is why do we need all these thousands of themes if you can actually just create these different styles of themes and have one starter theme. But again, I'll be covering that in a future tutorial. So subscribe if you wanna see that one. This next one is also very exciting. This is copy and paste block styles. This would enable you to create a style within a block. Again, let's take the button block as an example. So you create a nice style, change the size, change the color, change the radius. You can then just click copy and then paste that to another block, potentially on a completely different page. Quite a few page builders already have this built in and also some third party Gutenberg block libraries have this built in and it's nice to see it coming to call Gutenberg. If you've ever overwritten a reusable block by mistake, 
And this next one's for you and for me, because I've done it. Uh, this is colorization of synced blocks. So synced blocks are blocks that you've created somewhere else and you're reusing them potentially in lots of places on your site. Examples are the reusable block or also template parts as well. They're going to make it easier for us to see that these are actually reusable blocks or synced blocks as they're calling them. There's two places primarily where you'll see this in the list view up here. So you can see we've got these different colors to, to identify that they are actually synced. But also I think down here in the actual, when you're using the block itself, it's gonna give you some kind of way of identifying not to edit this block because if you do, it's gonna destroy everything. It looks like work has started on phase three of the Gutenberg project. The four phases of Gutenberg were one, easier editing with the block editor, two, full site editing, three, multi-author collaboration and phase four, multilingual support. And it looks like WordPress have started work on multi-author collaboration. I will put a link in the description below, but they've got this site here, which talks about the work that's actually started on this, which I find very exciting. And this is a sort of screenshot of potentially where they've got to. This is a beta version, I think. And you can see down here, somebody is typing and as they type, uh, it's actually telling us who's working on it at that time. Anders Norin has released a brand new Linktree style theme called Oaknut. Linktree is a service which lots and lots of people use, well, 25 million, where you have a link in the bio for your maybe Instagram account, which takes them off to a page which has all your links on it like so. Linktree charges for it. Well, they have a free version, but if you want to do anything particularly useful, then you have to pay for it. Now you can do it for free with this new theme by Anders Norin. It's a really simple one page theme but we should all be using WordPress instead of these paid for services, so check it out. Every week we get somebody famous to read out the latest Gutenberg review. Normally it's Alan Rickman, but he couldn't make it this week, so we've got Arnold Schwarzenegger. You can see the header box moves all over the place. And this is simply the worst update I've ever experienced. I have to use the classic end of the plug. You know, I will go mad if they make it so the damn box doesn't keep moving over where I'm supposed to be typing. I'm making it's the text and I can see the 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 That's what happens when you rely on artificial intelligence. Well, thank you, Arnold, for that review. It was a one-star review. I actually went in and tried to help um, Jamil Broom uh, by going back and asking actually what was going on, but generally on when you go and try and help out on the Gutenberg forums, you don't get an answer, you just get a one star review and then people run away. <laughs> That's all the block news for this week. If you wanna keep up to date with all things Gutenberg, blocks and WordPress, hit that subscribe button below and you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Also, every time you do hit like below, our cats get a little treat. <laughs>